Hey, I'm the Catalan Gamer. Welcome back to Pro Cycling Manager 2019 Stage Racer episode number 46. We're still at the Tour de Suisse. Two stages left to go in this one. 16 kilometer time trial up first. Mostly flat, but there's definitely some undulation to it that will affect things. And I am in ninth overall and definitely one of the stronger time trialists at this race. So we'll see if we can move up the order a little bit, but Time gaps are relatively big in this one, so there might not be a massive amount of, of change. Uh, the riders are not terribly close. As I prepare to go out on course, a question that has always persisted in my mind that I've never known the answer to really presents itself at the moment. That question being weather conditions during a time trial. Do they actually affect things or not as we prepare to head out onto the track here? Uh, again, I'm starting from ninth place. I've got a 81 on our time trial today. That is that is pretty solid. Uh, 79 is probably a, a bit harsh on a start though. So the first half of the riders went out in dry conditions, albeit blustery crosswinds. That settled down a little bit as the snow rain mix has begun to come down instead. So we're looking at 22 minutes overall. Soren Craig Anderson has gone top. Now, time-wise, it looks like times have actually improved because Victor Campenard's easily one of the favorites, finished right after. Ooh, that's a good time, and I've still got uh, a really good chance. We've got plenty of energy left here. We are saving some because we've got a... Um, a very large uphill section coming up here. Uh, but anyway, I think the wind is really helping time now. And the rain is not necessarily hurting the times. So uh, that's my interpretation. But I've always been curious about how much things are affected. Because there's, it was 30 km per hour crosswinds. Uh, it was quite blustery. Now it's it's not so bad. I mean, it's still the wind's still blowing, but it's definitely not blowing like it was. Uh, about to go into the red here. I need to back off just a little bit, but I think once we get over the top of this section, we will recover some on the short descent and get back uh, the extra energy that we're using and abusing. Just three seconds down here at the second check. And we're hitting the top now. We don't have a ton of energy left, but we're, we're definitely going to need to back off towards the end, though. Uh, again, this is a good recovery to get us back closer, but we're just in the negative right now, just slightly. I think 74 should just about get me there. One kilometer to go. This could be a very good time. Uh, we're already coming up on Enrique Moss. Uh, it looks like I'm about to tank. Oh, I run out of energy. Just a few meters from the line. That's good. Second place, just three seconds down with eight riders to go behind us, will absolutely be a top five time. Guaranteed. The goal is top ten, so that's a really good time. We come in with no bonuses of any kind. Reichenbach. Oof. That's a good time for Reichenbach. Tishmanut. Another one. We were about nine minutes down overall. He loses a minute, so that could put us ahead of him. Uh, Malama's pretty far ahead. Nope, we will not be ahead of Malama. So we're really only looking at one or two unless Landa loses a ton of time. But at the moment, he's only about a minute down. But he's still heading in. Oh, just over a minute down. Uh, Rowan Dennis, of course, puts in a really good time. I have no idea how he's so high in the standings, but he is. Avedipol, fast. Oh, Avedipol, same time as Anderson. It's curious because I've often seen positions switched when they actually go to the podium. So it's possible that Avenipol was ahead by tenths of a second. But we do get a top three on the stage. That is excellent. It is Soren Craig Anderson who hangs out to take the stage. Remco Avenipol one second down on countback, and I am four seconds behind as they round things off. Just ahead of Carapaz and Davies to round out the top five. In the overall, I move up a whopping one position. Eighth place. That's because the time gaps were rather large. So uh, with just one stage left to go in this one, 
We only pick up one place despite finishing third overall in that one. Carapaz hangs on to the lead ahead of Yates and then a Venipol. We're too far down in the KOM and other competitions, so we're, we're just looking at a comfortable top 10 overall and a top three on a stage. Not bad. Final stage, and we're already seeing a little bit of chaos, though I do think it will calm down. It's only a 116 kilometer stage, so it's rather short, but it's two all category climbs. My prediction is we're going to have a smaller group finish. And that final climb, you cannot win on that final climb, but you absolutely can lose. That being said, there's, uh, there's a good 16 kilometers after the top of that climb, a long descent time for everyone to come back back together. Now the initial break had nine riders but the field was not content with the, the nine riders going away so the chase was really hard and when we hit this little climb right there on the, the left hand side over the course of that little climb the field split up into half a dozen different groups. Now as aforementioned, I expected things to calm down and come back together. They finally have. Detier, or Detier is on uh, breakaway duties today, and he is trying to get himself into that group, making contact. That, that would make it 10, and they're already a minute ahead, so it does look like we finally calm down, and we will have 10 riders away. But I finally have a sense of what's going to happen as now more Max Shockman isn't Shockman oh no he's in 32nd okay uh, Bilbao over an hour behind so no threats there uh, but I finally have some teammates making some progress here so uh, Gratic you're gonna go up to Bevan and then uh, De La Part you're going to move to the front. Bryant is going to protect. And we're going to get you guys back into a forward position supporting the team. Right now there's no pace in the field. So it's completely okay. We're just now allowing the breakaway to uh, open a lead. There you go. Now you can settle down. Yeah. So... Capio is still let's see, out of control of his gel. This would be a great time to use his gel. But we're going to speed things up for a little while as things have settled, but we are already on the first all category climb. This thing is intense. Uh, uh, there is no profile for it, so it ha it's not saying how long it is, but we still have... Uh, 7k to go to the top and we're well past halfway up so it was at least it was a 15 plus kilometer climb uh, we are in need of water but we are approaching the top just 4k away so we'll wait until we get near the top to send somebody back to get it say so, uh, those providing protection Gratic is in the best position to do so again I'll wait until we're within about a k which is now. Go ahead and go get water. All right, some riders were lost out the back, but not many. 123 left in the peloton. Uh, the 11 breakaway riders, and I think this is part of the reason why it took so long to form, as what the heck is going on? By Dylan Toynes. Everybody's going to get water themselves. Awesome. Love you, Gabe. Love you. No, no, I don't. Uh, not when you do things like this, anyway. Uh, and this is not really an order that I can ultimately cancel. So we're wasting a whole bunch of, bunch of energy here on the flat, going back, getting water ourselves, as is half the freaking team. Oh, now, now De La Part's going back as well. So we're literally all getting water ourselves. It's freaking awesome. Uh, 
uh, everybody but De La Part is done with that task. Finally, everyone finishes with just 30k left to go. That at least should give us enough water to go the distance at this point, but uh, we're going to head into this final climb now. And let's bring it on down. So the lead of the breakaway is down to five and a half minutes. That should actually come down pretty quickly on that climb. However, a few of those riders in that 11 are quite strong and I, I doubt that they're going to come back easily. So I would imagine there's going to be a few that stay away, possibly all the way to the finish line, but the peloton will start shrinking relatively soon. Briat, Capio, and Gratic aren't going to last terribly long here and then I'll be down to three riders. Uh, I do have this ugly, ugly, nasty, nasty, nasty minus three race day condition. Fortunately, all things considered, uh, my mountain rating stays at an 80, but my resistance is affected. My stamina, not an issue today because of the short distance of the stage, but the resistance down to a 70. The downhill lost three points, and, and there's definitely going to be that downhill factor. So I have no chance of breaking away and doing anything. So my goal, my objective here is to just stay put. Okay, so Briette and Capio are done. Uh, who is protecting Briette is De La Part. So De La Part, you're going to take over here. Uh, Briette, send you to auto. And Capio, send you to auto. Gratic just hanging on. Yeah, we're not pulling back any time on these guys yet. Now I think Bevin, oh yeah, he's got a nasty uh, race day condition today as well, as he's not feeling good. So I think I'm going to use him and then give a break to uh, De La Part to stay put for a little bit. Uh, I want him to actually follow me. Can you do that for me? There you go. Bevan, I think he's just about close enough where he's actually supporting me. If he wasn't before, he definitely is now. We should be getting at least a minor imp Well, I don't know. There's a proximity thing. He doesn't have to actually be directly in front of me for there to be a benefit, but he is about to run out of energy on this one as he's just now <laughs> making contact. I think he's out actually just now hitting that point where he's close enough proximity-wise to actually provide some sort of support to me. It's in such percentages that the strongest can create some gaps. And he's going backwards. So we switch this up now. And you predict. Back into that roll. Uh, we're, we're actually most of the way up already. And there's still 100 riders here. So this is not a hard ride. It looks like we're, we're going to have... Quite the large group seeing the top on this one. But here comes an acceleration. Mikel Landa put a little pressure on. This is going to speed things up a little bit. Yates covering it off. Landa is... What place are these guys in? Yates is second over... Oh, Landa is fifth. Well, I'm, I'm not racing those guys. I, I am racing like Malama, but there's, there isn't going to be some mass group thing today. Uh, there really isn't. I'm going to back off a little bit because I can already see that we're going to get over the top. I'm, I'm going to save my gel because with just 1k to go, uh, it wouldn't kick in until the top anyway. And with 48 riders here, this group is way too large. There's not going to be a solo winner to the bottom. There we go. Made it over the top. I'm going to recover. I'll use my gel at the end and be able to go for some sort of sprint. But with 48 riders here, guaranteed, there's going to be somebody who's got a much better sprint rating than I do. The acceleration is good. Acceleration will help. But it's not going to be enough. Pace is pretty hot right now, but despite that, heart rate's still low because we're in the aero tuck for the most part. 
those who are still in recovery. Speed it up through the descent here. We're down to 7k. This is the time to use the gel. There you go. Full sun over Frale, Formolo, Gaudu, Davies, Toynes. Those six made it in towards the end. We're down to 4k. There's not much left to go for here on the stage. Campanard stakes seventh. Bilbao. Two and a half K now. Sliding up. There we go. 99. And we sprint. Uh, Detier takes 11th. My teammate. He's been dropped by that group on the climb. Alphilippe wins the sprint over Scoins. I just missed a top 20. I couldn't even get in the top 20. <laughs> I only got 30th. I was definitely further down that pack than I thought I was. Still have riders reaching the top of this all category climb. So uh, that obviously secures the 8th place. No doubt about that one. I, I did expect the group to be a little bit smaller. I did not expect a... Uh, just about 50 riders to be in that final group. I thought it'd get down closer to 15 to 20, maybe 25, but I knew it was gonna be a fairly large group as things go. Uh, the pace initially did make it look like things could really blow up on that first climb, but once the group did establish, that whole sitting up thing allowed almost everyone to get over that first climb in the group. There you go, eighth place. Not in the points classification. Seventh in the KOM. Second in the under 25s to Eventipol. Five minutes behind him. And same distance down to Sivakov. And third. And the team, this really goes to show just how poor this team is as a group. Because I did not use and abuse those riders, except maybe a single stage. Did I use and abuse my teammates a little bit? And yet we were 17th out of 20. So the team outside of myself brought a really, really poor group. So stage classification, they wanted a top three. We nowhere near that, so bad evaluation there. But we do get the 8th overall, and they are satisfied with that, even though there was no position that they wanted me in at all. Second in the Young Riders. If Venipol wasn't here, that would have been a, a, a nice boost to us. But we pick up 27 points. The race as a whole, we picked up about 100 points. And points are really hard to come by these days. Really hard to come by uh, because the team expectations are just so outrageous that even when we meet them, we, we only get a handful of points uh, because it's often win, and then you win, and they're like, okay, here's 10 points because we told you to win. So picking up 100 over this race was uh, better than what we've been getting most of the time lately. Uh, recently, it's been more the, the monthly leveling up, which makes me very pleased that I spent those points on getting an extra 15 every month uh, because... In the long term, that's having a huge impact. We are a, a level or two away from being able to do anything uh, rider evolution-wise. So, you know, with that in mind, I think we're uh, looking pretty good before the end of the year to level up again. But I don't think we're going to see any attribute increases until next season. At least that's my pre prediction. But I, I don't mind this so much. I mean, last year, you, you level up, you level up, you level up, you level up. And eventually, it slows down a little bit, but not significantly. This year, not only does it slow down to a crawl, but then with the new uh, skill set, that they've introduced you get so many levels that just 
give you a skill and no attribute increases. And we're looking at a couple levels in a row with that, meaning it really slows the pace of your growth, which actually kind of makes sense because early in your career, you develop a lot as you learn the ropes, but then refining and mastering and, and becoming the best doesn't happen overnight. It takes a long, long time to, to get marginal gains. We are on to the natties. It's the U.S. National Time Trial. We're going to be heading out pretty soon. Let's slow things down a little bit. Let's take a look at the conditions first. 37 kilometer per hour, and it starts as a headwind, and then crosswind, tail. Cro that's more cross than anything. You get a, a pretty decent tailwind here and crosswind again towards the finish. So the wind is going to be an issue. We're looking at an 18.1 kilometer race. So doing some quick math on this one as we're about to head out. Let, let's at least get to the base here. There we go. That was what I was most worried about. A minus freaking three. And this is going to hurt. This is going to hurt a lot. Okay, here, here's why. I, I'm probably not going to retain my jersey today due to this condition. One, I'm not on a fitness peak. So I was nervous about what the condition was going to end up being. So the weather conditions, yeah, not good. My condition is atrocious. Because this is almost entirely flat, there's only two ratings we need to look at. That's my time trial and my prologue. Okay, if you don't know this one, the math is actually pretty easy to figure out how to divide this. Anything under five kilometers is 100% prologue. Anything over 30 kilometers is 100% time trial. Anything in between is a split of the two, and that split runs along a line percentage breakdown so halfway in between 5 and 30 is that 17 and a half so exactly 17.5 kilometers is going to use a 50 50 split between your time trial and your prologue rating now this is 18.1 meaning it is ever so slightly more time trial than prologue that means what I'm facing is a 79 mixed, right about 50%, with a 71. So you divide that down the middle, and we're a 75 today. It's not terrible, but it is certainly not ideal as we head into this one. You can see I'm, I'm a little bit negative here at just a 75, and I should be able to push a 76 pretty easily. Uh, I should still have a good time. But uh, just I don't know what we're going to be able to do here. I don't think we're going to be able to come away with the victory on this one uh, today. We are first so far. And I'm not even the first one out on the road. Who the heck is behind me? O'Byrne. Oh, this is... Uh, uh, and then Chad Haga on the other side. So O'Byrne oh, is, uh, I think, a regen. Uh, made by the game, but and he's actually ahead of me. There you go. So I'm down to second. He is four seconds clear. I'm level with Haga and Van Garderen. Van Garderen should be able to put together a good time today, uh, as he does have a good mix of time trial and prologue. We're going to look at that second checkpoint now. How are we doing? We do have a little bit excess. There's going to be a little uphill section coming, and I want to attack that one a little bit harder, and that's here in just a moment. So we're gonna we're gonna go 80 for this little uphill. I want to push fast, gain a few seconds in there. There we go. Ah, see, look, we're we're down to third, seventh place, and that's Van Garderen and Haga going ahead of us, and O'Byrne uh, going one second quicker. So we're eight seconds down, currently in fourth place as we approach the end. Now I've got that little bit of energy left, and that's certainly a good thing. We're gonna be able to push and maybe pull back. A few seconds, but we are eight seconds down overall. Van, Van Garderen goes quickest ahead of Paulus, and we're going to see those times coming in here. 
Uh, we're inside 1K. We need to attack. 99, 99. Come on, come on. Pace, pace, push, 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 push. Oh, oh. Okay, well, we got back ahead of Vanguard. We're ahead of Haga. But O'Byrne, I, I don't know if we're going to be quicker than him. I don't think we are. I think we might be second. Oh, we got him. We got him. One second. One flipping second. We did it. Okay, we retained the jersey despite a poor, poor condition today. Whew. That was close. That was close. That little bit of extra energy, that hard push at the end was awesome. Yes. All right. <sighs> okay. We retain our jersey for another year. That's a big win. That minus three, that, that really hurt. I mean, that, that takes away a, a point and a half. I mean, that's that's a significant drop from what we would have been. I think we would have been another 15, 20 seconds down the road if we didn't have that, if we were just straight zeros, nothing else today, we would have been able to win comfortably. We, we are the strongest time trialist, but it's that prologue that's not great. O'Beirne, I still don't know what his ratings are, but. They had him favored ahead of us. Exceptional evaluation. The goal was top five, so 33 points for that one. And we're back up to a very pleased manager. And we're also about to hit the start of January. So let's go ahead and keep it live for that as we'll take care of our dossier. And then we're going to be heading into the road race from there. I do like how this year's edition, uh, still playing the old series, you really start picking up on how big of a difference there is in the simulation times. But here we go. Contract update. Okay, it was Mitchelton Scott that we're focused on. And you can see we're already nearly, nearly green. A couple of results. Couple of results and we should see that hit green here, so that's good. Smaller teams already starting to favor us. CCC, of course, really want us back, but um, I'm not a fan of that because I've had no support this year. So it's going to be the Österreich Hörnfeld after the road race. Of course, the road race will be the last race of this episode as we head into it. And what are we looking at? Expected race day condition is zero. That's exactly what it was yesterday, uh, the two days ago. I'm just catching some really bad luck recently with some nasty negative race day conditions. I haven't had that good positive, positive, well above bell curve condition in quite a while it's a sprint no oh come on so we're heading to daytona beach florida for a 229 kilometer sprint i've got no chance in this one so never mind we're not going to be heading to this race for the usa championships i will not wear the jersey this year uh, the favorites taylor finney sean bennett of course uh, Miguel Bryan up there, but yeah, I'm I'm nowhere near that. So let's let's see who has the jersey, because guaranteed I've got no chance of taking it. And it's Taylor Finney. I claim 13th anyway, but that's yeah, that's not because of anything. So Taylor Finney does get it ahead of Miguel Bryan and Sean Bennett. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at our points for the season and then wrap things up a little bit earlier today. It's definitely not time to get into yet another stage race currently. So in the individual rankings in the World Tour, we're 16th. Not bad for our first year here. And in the Super Prestige, looking even better and stronger, it is 8th overall with 1,157 points for the year thus far. 
But that's going to do it for this episode. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit that like button, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.